Good afternoon. An opening with um, a word of prayer to everyone that is listening. Let's bow in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day, for the opportunity to come together yet once again, Lord. We worship you, Lord God. We praise your holy name, Lord. We lift up your name, Lord God. Now, Lord, um, I pray for this Bible study, Lord, that you anoint me to speak whatever you would have me speak. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for anyone out there who is in need of healing, Lord, who may be having circumstances that they need um, the touch of your hand and your direction. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We are discussing today James 1, 19 through 27. We are continuing the study on the book of James. We discussed in this study so far James 1, 1 through 15, we learn that God uses trials to help us grow. The next study was on James 1, 13 through 18. And this study was about temptation and how we should deal and handle, deal with and handle temptation. God does not tempt us. If you remember, we said this, when we give in to evil, it gives birth to sin. We also learn that every good and perfect gift is from above. God gave his word of truth to us. Why? So we can be a kind of first fruit of his creation little history about the book of James. As I said before in this study, James was the brother of Jesus and one of the disciples. He was a powerful leader of the early Christian church. This letter was written by James to Jewish Christians in the first century regarding putting faith to work. In trials and triumphs. He also uttered harsh denunciations against relig religious hypocrisy. Today's study is on James 1, 19 through 27. This passage is advice for changing our behavior and growing in faith. And within this passage, James provides a list of do's and don'ts. I'm reading, I'm going to read the passage now. And this is James 1, 19 through 27. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, 
not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. My, my, what a word. And we continue. Verse 26. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Verse 27. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Now let's go back to verse 19. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness of God that God desires. One of the do's that we can take away from this, refrain from being hasty in the things of God. What is your pattern when hearing and speaking? Do you rush to make a decision or do you step back and you pray and you meditate? and you wait to get an answer from, from God. What is your pattern of hearing and speaking? Do you rush to speak after hearing something? Do you think before you speak? Is what you say edifying to those who hear? Do you Control your tongue. So we should be quick to listen. Listen intently. We need to be slow to speak. Proverbs 10, 19 said, says, Sin is not ended by multiplying words, but the prudent hold their tongue. So if you think speaking and continuing, continuously speaking will solve the problem, sometimes it's best to, to stand still and pray over a, a, a situation. And then stand still and think before you speak. Don't, one of the don't takeaways. Don't respond in anger. It's not good to debate in anger. This is not righteous in God's sight. True righteousness is sown in peace, not in wrath. What is anger? Anger is a strong feeling of displeasure aroused by a wrong whether real or perceived. Anger is seething and usually leads to an outburst of temper. We should name it whenever we're feeling this anger, name it, confess it, and put it away and pray about it, most importantly. The worst thing we can bring to any dispute is anger. Anger is not only in speech. Some people think that, well, I didn't, I wasn't angry because I didn't have an outburst of anger. I didn't say anything wrong, but it is also in thoughts. What are you thinking? Are you, are your thought processes in anger, angry. Ephesians 4, 26. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. One of the things that we taught 
in marriage ministry was to not go to bed angry, not go to sleep angry. Talk to your spouse and try to resolve differences before you go to sleep at night. You want to wake up refreshed and uh, in good in good spirit so that you can approach God without feeling any unresolved issues and without feeling angry. One of the things I listened to this week after um, First Lady Rosalind Carter died, one of the things they said about she and her husband was that they always resolved differences before they went to sleep at night. They did not go to sleep angry at each other. So I encourage you to do this, that if you're married. Married. Uh, verse 21. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. One of the do's that, that, that uh, James is saying, get rid of filth and evil. It is so prevalent in the world. We don't want it within us. We don't want to be surrounded by it, but we can't help but be surrounded by it because we are in the world. We can be in the world, but not of the world. We are influenced by this filth. filth. We need to strip it off. Strip off the dirty, vile clothing and put on the new. What do you watch on TV? Think about it. What are these things that are influencing you? What are you reading? What are you reading? To be moral involves intentional acts. Ephesians 4, through 24. You were taught with regard to your formal, former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. One of the do's, one of the takeaway do's, humbly accept the word that is planted in you. When you accept this word in you, humbly, filth is cleansed away, cleansed away by hearing the word. Welcome the seed of the word with humility. The word that is planted in you is the engrafted word planted in you by the Holy Spirit. John 15, 3 says, you are already clean. You are, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. The word saves you. Verse 22 through 25 do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Question, when you look in the mirror, what do you see? Do you see blemishes, faults? 
Do you see a reflection of a new birth after you receive salvation? What do you see? Let's, another do we can take away from this verse. Lay aside everything that soils. Welcome the seed of the word. Our sins are the spots the law discovers. Christ's blood is the layer the gospel shows. Okay? So we want to lay aside everything that soils. We want to welcome the seed of the word. That means we need to study the word daily. And before you study the word, make sure you pray that God gives you the revelation in you about what the word says. Okay? Don't. One of the don'ts. Don't have an unteachable spirit. Don't have an unteachable mind. You want to be open to the word. You want to be open to what God is revealing to you. So that requires submission. You want to submit to God's will. The word of truth will set before us the corruption of our nature. So, in other words, he will reveal to us what we need to change within us. The word is counsel, all right? The Holy Spirit is our counselor. Verse 26, those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Don'ts. Don't have a unbridled tongue. Unbridled tongue means an uncontrolled and unrestrained tongue. A person's religious pretensions are refuted by the allowance of an unbridled tongue. John MacArthur, a biblical scholar, states, each person speaks 18,000 words a day. If we speak these many words, it is understood as to why we must take action for Jesus and be careful what we say. Sometimes we just ramble on and on and on and on and on, and we're not aware of what we're saying. We're not aware of what impact we're having on others, those around us. Do you have signs of vain religion? Do you always speak of faults of others? Do you look down on the wisdom of others? Do you have a slanderous tongue? This person, a person who has a slanderous tongue cannot have a truly humble and gracious heart. James calls religion that goes with an uncontrolled tongue worthless. A worthless religion is impure and uncharitable. True religion teaches us to do everything as in the presence of God. Everything for God's glory. Verse 27, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and thoughtless is this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Examine yourself. Is your religion pure and faultless? 
genuine religion is pure? Are you in personal contact with the sorrow of the world? So in other words, when you see people in distress, when you see the homeless, when you see the needy, do you reach out to help? Do you visit the afflicted, the marginalized? Do you visit the widows and orphans? Ladies, I leave you with this. We want to live a godly lifestyle and keep ourselves uncontaminated by the world. I just want to share that I am in no way perfect. I have a long way to go. I am still uh, working on myself and God is still working on me, Lord. And I thank him. I am a work in progress. I am still going through that sanctification process. We want to be women of God who has faith controls her tongue and had behavior that is Christ-like. Everything we do, we must do for God's glory. Not for recognition, not to, to um, become big in everyone else's eyes. We, whatever we do, we want to do for the glory of God. Amen. Now let's close in prayer. And I thank you for listening. And um, we'll continue on with James um, probably next week. I'll do another recording. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come together to discuss your word. Lord, help us to control our tongues, Lord. Help us to be able to meet the needs of those in need, Lord. Help us to, to learn to to be obedient to you, Lord God, to be submissive to you, Lord, submissive to your will for our lives, Lord, submit to being, um, to prayer, to having a good prayer life, to have a, uh, to a meditation life, Lord, and to, to learn to help others who are in need, Lord. I ask all these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.